What's up guys, my name is Andrew. This is my HZJ77. Today we're talking about the steering damper. You can see I've got my old one on the ground over here. I got it all pulled off. It's had a hard life. It's had a long life, so it's not a bad thing, but we're putting on the Dobinson's 12 stage adjustable steering damper. This thing is top notch, super excited to put it on here. Really what we're doing here is helping with the overall feel of the vehicle. We don't want to put these on to cover up speed wobble or shakiness that should be corrected, right? Whether that's out of balance tires, loose components, that's not what we're doing here. What we're doing here is after we've taken care of that, this takes some of that fatigue from whether it's a rut in the road and we're driving with these big off-road tires where it pulls off and tries to follow it, it helps to smooth some of those things out. So inside the cabin, it's a lot more controlled while we're driving. Obviously, anything that's adjustable, I'm all for, right? I've got MRRs on here, everything's adjustable. I love that because we drive this in different kinds of scenarios, different places. But when we're talking about the steering damper, the other huge positive of this is that it's fully rebuildable just like all of the other Dobinson suspension that we put on. So we get rebuildable, it's huge, it's beefy. Look at the size of this thing compared to the factory one. And we get that adjustability that we're gonna be able to take it from a road to off-road, all these different scenarios and dial in to make sure we're getting enough uh, feel that we want and not too much feel and some of that comfort back into it. All right, so we're just going for a little drive. We haven't put the Dobinsons on yet because we want to show kind of a comparison. And obviously, there's plenty of things that shake and rattle in this truck uh, just based off its age and what it's made for. Um, but we just kind of want to see if we can show a difference in the steering um, after we change with this bigger, more adjustable steering damper in there. So. We're going to try and take it on some rough roads. There's plenty of those in Colorado. Heaven knows that. Um, and uh, we're going to see what the steering wheel looks like. A lot of this is in the feel, so hopefully we can see it. But uh, a lot of these movements that you'll feel with potholes and uh, what is it, manhole covers, cracks in the road, most of that is what you feel in the vehicle while holding the steering wheel, right? That vibration transfers a lot more than what you may see in the steering wheel. So we'll see what we can see. Um, I can feel quite a bit. <laughs> That's why I want to put this, damp this damper in. Uh, it's obviously doable. Last uh, couple of weeks ago, I drove to Salt Lake City. So it was about nine, nine and a half hours back and forth. It was fine, right? There's no major issues. I wasn't overly tired, uh, but I'm expecting that it's gonna be a much more comfortable ride here after that. So I'll be more excited about doing a drive like that. All right, so you can see a little bit of vibration, a little bit of movement in the steering wheel. It's a little hard, like a lot of this is feel um, because I wanna maintain control of the vehicle. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, go get it installed um, because I, I think we can hopefully see a little bit. Um, I can definitely feel it. Um, one of the big reasons why I'm changing this is the last time I pulled it in, I could see oil drips coming from my damper. So I know the old one is toast, it's done. Um, so we're definitely gonna feel a difference here, uh, but I don't think that we're gonna get any more visual movement or shaking um, or just vibration, not shaking, shaking is the wrong word, vibrations um, visually most of this is really just felt. All right, we're back at the shop. We did our test drive. It's been what I've been driving for the last few years. Um, so let's go get this installed and see what it feels like after. So here's the old one. We got it off. It's uh, gnarly. I'm using a rag on this side. But you can see that's not ideal. <laughs> at a minimum, we want everything to be nice and even the whole way through the stroke. Um, it does stay in its position, but it's also all wet because it's been leaking. So it's time. Okay, so this is setting one. We're gonna compare this to our OEM hammered worn out damper. This is the first setting, setting number one. So this is the lightest dampening and it's still quite a bit more than we had before and nice and even all the way through the stroke. That's 
If nothing else, we want it to be even all the way through because that helps us be predictable in what we're feeling and what we're steering against. Um, so we just adjusted this to setting 12. It was on setting one. And you can see how hard it is to push this thing in. <laughs> so this is, I don't even know if I can pull it out. I'm not that strong. I gotta do more push-ups. Uh, this is at max dampening. Uh, so this is the most we're gonna get, but this is a crazy amount of dampening. All right, <clears throat> so this is a, a very simple install. You can see we've got a frame mount and we've got um, a steering linkage mount. I guess that's the tie rod or the drag link. We'll figure that out later. Basically, we've got two mounts, a um, couple of nuts to put on here. This stud I already put in. Um, it comes as a separate mount with two rubber bushings. Stick that all together. You can do it in either order. We're going to put the reservoir side um, towards our ste steering arm uh, because it'll kind of fit all up in there and then we kind of keep it protected. There's a couple of Allen bolts on the other side. We can loosen and rotate this if we need to and that's going to move our reservoir, but I want to kind of keep it away from this uh, radiator hose. Again, this side won't have much movement up and down, so when we get it to clear stuff, we're going to be okay. Um, it's really just a pivot uh, rather than a movement area. And now I've got to be a strong man and extend this guy to fit over here. <sighs> strong guy. So this is how the factory stabilizer was mounted. We had this one coming from the backside. These are tapered holes, so we got to keep the same direction. This comes from the backside, that goes to the front. Um, so we've got the cones facing the right way. We'll start our nut on there. Come under here, start our nut on the backside. And this is another beauty of uh, a simple upgrade to help with the enjoyment of driving your vehicle. It's literally two nuts. Nice and easy. Um, I think these are 19s. Let me just grab the right end here. Oh, beautiful. So all we're going to do is tighten these guys on. Come on now. There we go. It's going to pull it right into that tapered socket. These are nice nylock washers as well. So not terribly worried about them loosening up. But again, just tightening it into that hole. All right. Nice and snugged up. Beautiful, ready to roll. With our two Allen adjustments up here, we can rotate this. So we wanna make sure that we clear this linkage and anything up above with all of our range of movement. Um, so we can, you know, on this vehicle being a leaf spring, we're not gonna pull anything and, and uh, articulate it, but you can kind of guesstimate how much, how close it's going to be to touching things and just rotate this body to make sure that reservoir is protected. We want it facing up to stay out of rocks and debris, and we wanna keep it away from items that are gonna move and cause damage. Otherwise, we're gonna tighten up our last one here and call it a day. Now we're coming in. All right, nice and tight, beautiful. So, how this is laid out right now, everything clears, it looks good. We've got our adjustment right underneath here, so it's very easy to get whether it's a long screwdriver or a short one in there to make our adjustments. Last final touch is gonna to be a beautiful sticker on the front. We got some in the package, so let me go grab that. We'll stick it on. Best part, this is what we came for, stickers. Probably won't work correctly if I don't put this sticker on anyways. Whew, look at that. Beautiful. She's ready to roll. All right. So we're gonna do a quick adjustment here. I'm gonna make sure it's at one. So we're gonna stick it up under here, tighten it up all the way down to one. I grabbed my stubby screwdriver, but even a full size clears that rod. You guys saw when we had it off, we did some adjustments on there. Um, and there's 12 settings. So I'll, we showed at one and at 12, obviously in between is somewhere in between. What I just changed it to is back to one. So that one was much easier to push that uh, rod through the steering damper. When we go to 12, it's much slower, but it feels incredible. <laughs> so is it supposed to feel looser or tighter right now? So it would feel easier to turn the steering wheel and it's going to be holding you in the direction that you're aimed 
less than when at 12. But even at one right now, like it just feels so good. It's kind of, it's just holding it straight. You know, you still see, feel vibrations and whatnot in the steering wheel, but as you hit cracks, as you hit bumps, um, the car just does what you're expecting it to do instead of like, well, I wonder what'll happen when I go over that pothole, you know? Um, and that's not so much of an issue in newer vehicles. Um, so like, you know, current generation forerunners, they have uh, a steering rack and it attaches on both sides, right? It's instead of just having a, a drag link and a tie rod and having the box on one side. So it's not that one's inherently bad or one's inherently good. It's just a different way of doing that. So you don't have a steering stabilizer. Dobinson's doesn't make one. Nobody makes one for that style of steering because it doesn't have the same characteristics as what we have on a solid front axle. So in my opinion, it just feels like it's driving more so towards uh, driving more so like a newer vehicle is kind of how I would describe it. And again, <laughs> we're driving over these lines, we're driving over these potholes, whatever, these cracks in the ground. And I'm not like, hold on for dear life when you go over that bump, hopefully it doesn't turn something. Uh, it just does its thing. So we basically brought this thing back up to 2020 is what I'm trying to say, okay? It can't be brand new, but it's pretty close. <laughs> so good, it's just crazy. All right, so we're gonna crank it back up to 12 so we can see both sides. When I say back up to, I mean like what we did before we put it on the truck. Okay. 12 feels amazing. I would definitely feel like if I'm taking a known long trip, totally crank it up to 12 um, and just enjoy the drive. Uh, again, it just feels like I'm the only one telling the steering what to do. We've encountered quite a few different types of bumps, uh, a couple of turns, a couple of concrete to asphalt transitions, and everything just feels so much more controlled than it did before. This truck was just out of control before. I'm just kidding. It was good, uh, but now I feel far more confident driving around um, and not getting some weird feedback. The other thing is uh, my wife does enjoy driving the truck and I feel a lot better sending her out than what I had before. It was, you know, I'm sure she'll be fine, but no expected, unexpected steering wheel movement is exactly what we're going for and uh, this definitely does the trick. All right, <clears throat> so we took it for a drive. It was amazing in all settings. Uh, we tried one, we tried 12. There's, a, there's a, a difference between them. Obviously we can feel that, but even setting number one right out of the gate, you can feel the difference in what it steers like, what kind of inputs you're getting from the road versus what you're inputting to the steering wheel. And that's the biggest thing. We're not taking control out of the steering wheel. We're not making it more difficult to steer. What we're trying to do is reduce the outside influences and I can definitely feel that. Very happy with the upgrade. Um, we didn't get a chance to drive on any like washboard roads, any kind of dirt roads like that. But my expectation based off the large potholes and cracks that we have here in Denver would be that I'm gonna feel the same feeling um, that there's a significant improvement with that big bore damper that we put on there. Um, I'm gonna spend a few weeks, maybe a few months adjusting and trying to figure out what feels best for which. I think 12 is gonna be my highway setting. Maybe five is around town and one would be off-roading. Um, but I also think I could probably set this thing at six and never touch it again and be perfectly happy. Uh, so we'll do a little bit of testing with that and uh, see if we can circle back and give you a review, a follow up in a few months here.